Estão todos vendo? É, ouvindo? Muito obrigado ao programa pelo acesso. Lacanaga for the work and uh, the work here is on the uh, 464 XLAT mechanism in wireless networks, especially in Wi-Fi networks. Why Wi-Fi? Because it's a topic that we have in, at the university today. We have um, so. In LACNOC, uh, in uh, 2018, in Rosario, I presented a paper on the uh, delivery of IPv6 only uh, for fine end users using NAT64, and we couldn't um, uh, give service to everybody. People had uh, legacy resources, and uh, for to use IPv6 only, people, we would need uh, many devices. So today, um, uh, some uh, you need more updated devices. So we need to attend everybody. And there were other problems that appeared with, um, so to, um, only um, IPv6 only with NAT64 is not a viable solution. If we are going, if we want to study with uh, the mechanism 464X uh, uh, LAT, here we have uh, the components of the mechanism. This is uh, the side of the client. We use the, uh, the CLAT, uh, the side of the client, that is called SIIT. This is uh, where the first translation occurs, and then we have the second that is called flat, and it's also known as NAT64, where the second translation occurs. But we have a problem because many devices, I think that this is one of the main problems of the mechanism, is to have a very uh, dissemination of a client service using that installs or that integrates the um, uh, operative systems of uh, a device. We don't have, we don't cover yet that with uh, the uh, vendors. So what is the solution that we could find? This is a virtual machine with a class function that intercepts all the transit from the customer and uh, the Wi-Fi and uh, the network controller. So now here, um, with a VM, uh, uh, with a cloud service, ends up solving the problem that we had. The, the tool that we used is Dual. That is a well-known uh, tool. It's an open so uh, source uh, software that was developed by the Nick Mexico um, uh, programmers. It's a very stable and uh, simple and e user-friendly tool. It does not require a very uh, powerful CPU or too much of a RAM memory. We had many tutorials, many webinars where they presented several uh, options on configurations of the tool. The striking thing about uh, Joule is the wealth of details that it produces in the uh, translation in the access logs. And that is very important today to analyze the security incidents. I won't enter into details because we don't have much time. And in, in, uh, I won't discuss the deployment, but it's quite easy just with two lines. Um, I enable the um, uh, the lat uh, the customers and the provider the suppliers uh, sites and uh, the, here for the dual connection I have two more lines uh, two more rows and here I have all the translation of the IP from the source to destination and the ports of the source port and the destination all the users enter through. Uh, uh, cut port, uh, 
that record the users to help uh, in uh, the research. And a big ally here is um, was um, sending those logs from Joule to a tool. So we we used the LK ELK stack that helps us look for all the logs in real time, all the logs that are happening uh, that precise moment. Here I see, you see the screen, you see the dashboard. I see, I can see graphically the day, the time. Uh, you can see the protocols uh, that are being translated in the protocol where I can have a very good uh, uh, graphic view with the charts. Th these are measurements in the network that we did. This is very good to understand how our network is operating. Here, the measurement was done through a web server, Apache, that uh, was configured in a WS instance with a dual stack. And we configured the log uh, with Apache to report the time in microseconds um, where the that the web server uh, deals with that request. We started with a device. It was a legacy uh, device. It was uh, an uh, iPad, a Mac, an uh, iPad. Uh, tablet, and it it uh, was uh, it took um, um, uh, one hundred ninety uh, uh, one hundred eighty seven point seventy six uh, microseconds, and the, here you see Linux Android six, the uh, smartphone, and uh, an Android eight point one, and you see there the time. And this is a, um, a native dual stack with Windows 7 and a wireless notebook in a Wi-Fi network, 192.52 with IPv4, and then uh, and there you have it in IPv6. And then you have a wired desktop or a PC with a wire with cable and the times for IPv4 and IPv6. These were the last 10, an average of the last 10 accesses in microseconds. Como conclusion, to conclude, 464x Labs works very well and solves the problems you used to have in order to make the legacy devices that reach the university. Here we have all the measurements in time. In all the measurements, we realize that both in IPv6, well, in IPv6, the time registered was less than IPv4. We didn't have a big variation that could be perceptible for the users as regards using 464xlat or not using 464xlat. The variations are very limited. You can hardly perceive the difference. So the users do not realize where they are browsing and what they are interested in doing so is browsing but they're not interested in the details but we can provide a better experience more and more with ipv6 we do manage to have a somewhat better experience in terms of browsing the devices The users have don't need to have any kind of setup. They are clatless. They work in a virtual machine. So the less the interference with the user's machine, the better. The configuration with tool is very simple. It is a great facility regarding the records as uh, the auditing records in ELK Slack and there's a need to do adjustments of the MTU particularly for some of the applications, namely Skype, internet banking, and there is some delay in the delivery of WhatsApp messages. WhatsApp continues looking for the messages so we can do a couple of MTU adjustments. And the more we advance IPv6, the least 
translation records we need. So I hope which this will happen in the near future. Here I have a couple of references for you, some links with tutorials, webinars, webinars organized by LACNIC in the context of Joel. So thank you very much for your attention. These are my contact details, my email address, email address, and through the official Slack tool, you can also contact me in LinkedIn or any other means. I am at your disposal to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. We have a question in Spanish. The question is, the OS providers, can they integrate CLAT in the operating systems? Do they already do this? The question is asked by Ramon T3K0. We still don't have here any news on OSs that use CLAT, CLAT natively. What we do is to set up Joule in a Linux in that OS and then make it work with CLAT. But OSs that already have CLAT, well, these are only starting to appear, for example, some routers or maybe smartphones like iPhone that already have that natively by default. Mm 